welcome, welcome to Sunday worship here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. We are so excited and glad to have yet another opportunity to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For God has truly blessed us. God has truly sustained us. God has given us yet another opportunity. And with this new morning, we celebrate the new mercies that we see. And we say, great is thy faithfulness, God, unto me. Great are your works. We, re we resound the words of the psalmist where he says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, we lift our eyes to you. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our hands and our spirits to you. And we say that you are truly worthy of all the praise. We say that you are a mighty God. We say that you are the king of glory. We say that you are a wonderful counselor and a mighty God. And we say thank you for allowing us to see yet one more Father's Day. As we celebrate Father's Day, we say that we're thankful to have you as our Father. We're thankful just to say, Abba, Father, and be able to cry out to you in every season, in every circumstance of our lives. And we say thank you for the fathers you have given to us. Thank you for the individuals you have placed in our stead to, to watch over us, to care for us, to make sure that we are raised up and reared in your word. We give you glory and honor for this worship experience. Let every person, let everything that is said and done be done for your building up of your kingdom. We invite you into this place and we say thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we say amen. The reading of the word is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Galatians 5, verse 1, reads as such. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. The word of the Lord. It is prayer time in the sanctuary. And I pray this morning that you're not merely watching us, but rather you are worshiping with us. There's a vast difference between watching and worshiping. So as we pray in this house of God, we pray that wherever you are in your home, that you'll join us in prayer. We ask God this morning for guidance, for wisdom, power, for strength, for healing. We place at the altar today one of our faithful deacons, Deacon David Pennock, who had surgery, home resting. We thank God for his faithfulness. Remember those on our sick and shut in list? And I would ask that you would pray for us as we contemplate 
the best time, the right time, open up the doors here at Bethlehem and other houses of worship. Most of you know that in Montgomery County, next Friday we will turn green. But that doesn't mean that we'll open up the doors to the church then. We want to ask God to give us the sign that it's safe for worshipers to come back. So we need your prayers. We're not going to rush. We want God to lead us. And we're grateful for this opportunity to join together in prayer. We're still in the midst of this coronavirus. Many have gone home to glory. Some who have family members in hospitals and nursing homes, and they cannot visit them. I pray today that you'll pray for those who are unemployed, those incarcerated, those who are on the front line in the medical field trying to do their best to help others. We pray today for family members who are in different states. So today we lift up Darlene Logan, our sister. We ask God right now thy blessing upon Karen. We pray for Karen Cleveland, the daughter of Evelyn and Joe Cleveland. So many others, and I'm sure that as I speak now, you have names. Bring them to the altar. Place them in your heart. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your co-workers. Pray for your friends. Yes, even pray for your enemies. God's called us to pray for all people. So I pray today that you have a heart that's open, that you'll pray for forgiveness. Pray today as we observe Father's Day. And I could not stand here without thanking Almighty God. Pastor Albert Franklin Campbell, Pastor Emeritus, the Mount Carmel Baptist Church, who has been a father, a mentor, a coach, my spiritual partner. I pray for him today, and I'm sure, I'm positive, as we pray today, that you can remember your father. And for those children who have never experienced the love of a biological father, they will know that God is our heavenly father cares for us. He loves us. So we pray for foster children, adopted children. We pray for those children who have never seen or heard their father. We pray today in the name of Jesus for those mothers, for women of God who have been like mothers and fathers. We pray today for the many people who have been a blessing to children, not having biological children of their own, but have been spiritual parents. There's so many children, so many things to pray for, yet God can hear and answer every prayer. So join us now as we pray together. Gracious and glorious God, we turn to you once again, knowing that we have been blessed by our Father, our Savior, our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh God, in the midst of all that we're going through, we pray for your healing hand. We thank you, God, today that we can call on you when all looks bleak, dark, and dismal, and that you're able to make a way out of no way, heal, strengthen, empower, forgive, bless, anoint, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, as we come this morning, we acknowledge our faults, our failures, our sins. Please, please forgive us that you might give us clear hearts, right minds. We might walk humbly with you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we ask your guiding hand as we face with so many challenges. And we know, God, you can do all things and do all things well. For those, oh God, on the sick list whose names perhaps have not been called, we think of our sister in Christ, Connie Rambo, as she guides and leads her son. Bless him. 
Bless, oh God, those men and women today who are struggling financially. Open up a door for them, oh God. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, for those who live in the streets, have no home to go to, bless them. And Lord, help us to be grateful, thankful for all that you are doing for us. You have been good. You are good. You're kind. You're loving. You're just. You're dependable. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Have your way in our lives. We might walk with confidence, strengthened today by your victorious hand of mercy. We give you praise. We give you glory. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on. Give him praise, Agape. worship experience that if you're able to that you would join us here at Bethlehem by giving God praise I mentioned earlier there's a vast difference between watching and worshiping or being a spectator or participating and God has blessed us to see a brand new week and so I'd ask in your home right now as we share that song once again give him praise today in your home right now, wherever you are, give him praise. Come on, everybody. Give him praise. Our Father, you are praise. holy. We give you glory.
be a blessing to us. It is challenging, and I mean challenging, to preach the empty pews. And I pray today that you are engaged in worship. I'm grateful to God for this live stream and for YouTube and all the other opportunities we have to view a service. But there's nothing like being in the house of God for yourself. Nothing like being with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And so even though I cannot hear you, I want you to know that I appreciate the fact that you're worshiping with us and that you can give God praise. You're not simply sitting down watching with a cup of coffee or doing something else, but you engaged in worship. And even as we look at this coronavirus and the changes that have occurred, and so much has been talked about now about how sports may come back without people in the stands. And the challenge of that, because that's an, an opportunity for people to be engaged. And so the same is true in terms of worship, that we are engaged in worship. I don't know about you, but I look forward to the time that we can assemble back into the house of God to give God praise and be able to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Does not mean that we don't appreciate what we're doing now, but I long for the time to be able to come back and share with our brothers and sisters in Christ and come into the house of God giving God praise. This is not permanent. It's something we're doing out of necessity. But prayerfully, you'll be worshiping God out of necessity, thanking him for the opportunity to get us through what we're going through now. And so I'm grateful today that we have our social media here and our musicians here and several of our leaders here. But we look forward to the time that you can be here or be in your place of worship, wherever that may be. As I mentioned earlier, we want to keep in prayer. Deacon David Pennock and his family, uh, so many other concerns that we have. And next Sunday is going to be an exciting time here in the life of Bethlehem. So Reverend Tripline, will you tell us about what's going to take place on next Sunday? And we're working hard with Michelle Turner, who is leading our education scholarship ministry. Yes, we have a wonderful effort that's being led by Michelle Turner and the ENS ministry to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to honor, to celebrate our graduates. Next Sunday, we're going to have a special service entitled Dreamers and Achievers. That's going to be the theme for our service next week. And we're looking forward to honoring the graduates, honoring all of our students, and making sure that we are acknowledging the wonderful work that they have done and the achievements that they have met. In this troubling year, they've overcome so much, and we want to make sure that all of them feel your support. So make sure you are tuned in. It's the same time, 9 a.m. on Sunday. There's a special presentation for the graduates at the end, and there's some other surprises that will be built into this service. So you do not want to miss the Dreamers and Achievers service. Thank you so much. Before you sit, before you sit, Michelle Turner also has launched this month opportunity for us to sow into the lives of our youth with our virtual fundraiser. It's so important because we have some outstanding students. Education Scholarship for many years have honored those students with scholarships, not just Bethlehem students, but community students as well. And we're also going to recognize on the second Sunday in July our students who are graduating from junior high. So say a word about that, but also say a word how we can be supportive of all of our students, it's not how much we give, it's the spirit in which we give it. Not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Speak a word about how we can sow into the lives of our students. Yes, there's a number of scholarships that have been given um, for our graduates who are graduating from high school and going on to college. Um, there'll be two uh, scholarships given from uh, the youth pastor as well as pastor and others in this, in this particular ministry. We want to make sure that they know that as they go out into this next phase, that we're looking not just for their spiritual growth, not just to make sure that they are socially in place, but also financially that we support them as well. The scholarship effort has already kicked off, and we're praying 
to hit a goal of at least $10,000 to actually sow into the lives of our students. You can give today. You can give now during this service. You can give after service and throughout this week. Make sure you go to education and scholarship and give for this cause. We have an ad book that we've already put into place that will be a part of their celebration. They'll be able to come next month on second Sunday and, and receive all of their uh, paraphernalia and things that we have put aside for this particular momentous occasion. So please, please, please donate to this cause, give to our youth. They are not just our future, but they are our present. We are depending on them to continue and what God has placed in them so they can lead us not just in tomorrow, but also today. I cannot find the words to express my deep appreciation to our congregation for how they continue to support the church as we love God and serve people. Our pantry has been such a blessing. People have come by to bring food and make sure that families in our community have food. And on Friday, I received a call from Pastor Alan Waller of the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church. He wanted to share with us a blessing they had received. And the blessing is Dairy Farms has provided them with milk, gallons of milk. And he's asked if we would like to be part of that experience. I simply said yes, because again, not just Bethlehem, but Maddie Dixon who worked so diligently all of her life to create Maddie Dixon Food Cupboard. A few weeks ago, they had a burnout or power out in our community. They lost all their food, and they were now doing a fundraiser to help purchase a generator. As a result of our giving, we sold into that effort as well as we sold into their supplying of additional food. So we're going to reach out to them on tomorrow to see if we could take some milk to them there may be others in our community who need some milk. We want to make sure we take advantage of every opportunity. And I'm grateful to God for Michelle Bradley. And so we'll be able to go first on Thursday around 9 o'clock, pick up the milk. Uh, if you would like to assist, please call the church. Ask for Brenda Benson, and we'll be able to give you information how we can do that. We want to help as many families as possible. Again, not just here at Bethlehem, but in other places in our community. And I'm grateful once again for Pastor Waller and all he's doing as well as Pastor Marshall Mitchell who is making sure that people get the testing that they need. And you can get testing even now at Montgomery County Community College. And so we're just grateful for every aspect of serving God and serving God's people. Today is Father's Day. I hope you have not forgotten that. Maybe I should say that to my family. It's Father's Day. And as always, we recognize the oldest and youngest father here at Bethlehem. So what we're going to ask today is that if you are sharing this worship experience, that you would call the church, leave the message for Brenda Benson, our chief of staff. Tell us your age, your name, and we will make sure that tomorrow you get a gift from Bethlehem recognizing all of the fathers. At the same time, we want the youngest father to come and be recognized and asked again that that individual would call the church today, leave a message for Brenda Benson, tell us your age and your name, and we have a wonderful gift for you, Father's Day. We already have a gift, a Father's Day gift for the oldest and youngest father. And we thank God for men of God who walk with integrity and love. And we salute all of our fathers today. And if we were here in the sanctuary, that's all fathers to stand. So fathers, if you're watching, stand in your home right now. Stand up, lift up your head, and give God praise. And he's created you to be a loving, faithful father. And you take the opportunity today, and even those fathers who are going home to glory, give God thanks for them. All fathers, we salute you today, and we thank God for those men who have not had biological children, but have been a blessing to so many children. So many youth have been blessed by men of God who serve God every day, and for that we give God praise. It's time to give. Praise God.
It's time to give. Giving is a part of worship. We ask now that as you worship with us, that you take the time to honor God with your gifts. All things come from God, and so we offer God today our, our tithes, our offerings, our gifts for a while. We might continue the message, giving God praise, glory, and honor. Come on, choir, bless us in song as we give willingly unto God. opportunity to give back to you that which you've given to us. May, oh God, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt all that we have has come from you. So accept, oh God, these gifts for your glory, do we pray. Amen. I want to thank God for the leadership of this church and how we have since March made every effort to make sure that we comply with the standards of worshiping God, keeping a distance. We could not do this without the support of our media ministry and Joe Wingen and his staff, our musicians. And I want you to see the sanctuary. If you would turn the cameras so that you can see how we've already created 
the opportunity for persons when we come back, social distancing. We've moved quite a few chairs out of the rear. We cannot move the pews, but when persons come back, they'll be able to sit at distance from each other, not on the same pew. Uh, we've cleaned out the chairs in the choir loft with just five individuals. The pulpit you can see now. Uh, we have hand sanitizers. We have markers on the floor. And we are grateful to God so that as we prepare to come back, and again, there's no timeline. We know that next Sunday we'll be here live streaming. The first Sunday in July will be live streaming. The second Sunday in July will be live streaming. And then we'll look at that point to see where we are at that particular time. But besides all of the efforts we put into this, we want to make sure that we go to God first in prayer, that he will lead us in the best way. We're looking at multiple services. What does that look like? Perhaps a 7.30 service, a 9 o'clock service, an 11.15 service. We do know that in July, Reverend Tripline will be moving with at least twice a month on our movement Monday services. We're doing everything humanly possible, but there's some things we need God's guidance on, his wisdom. And so today, as we look at the sanctuary and just grateful to God for our chairman of our deacons who has not missed a Sunday, our chairman of our trustees, our chairperson of our deaconess, Debbie, one of our trustees, and our new staff, we've added uh, another individual to our media ministry to make sure that we do as much as we can so that the worship service is clear and fulfilling. And so I'm going to ask this morning, Reverend Tripline, would just ask God's blessings upon this church as we seek to find God's guidance. Again, not rushing, but whatever we do, we still need to put God first have to acknowledge him first. So all of our plans have to be submitted to God. We can do all we can, but without God's blessings, it's all for naught. So we want God to know that he's first on our list of priorities. First, before we do anything. First, and acknowledge him for everything. Reverend Tripline, would you ask God's blessings now upon this place called Bethlehem, this house of bread, so that God will guide us with his wisdom, his strength, his direction for all of his people so that the ministry of the church can continue. Souls might be saved. Lives might be changed. And God will get the glory. Let us pray. God, we believe your word when it says that the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. Lord, we come to you saying that you are a mighty good leader. And we ask that because you are a mighty good leader, we ask that you would lead us all the way. God, this is your church. These are your people. We preach your word. We sing your songs. We live lives that, that illuminate your glory for the world to see. So everything that we do, from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all week long, we do it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. So we pray, God, that your kingdom will be shown as you leading us as our righteous king. Even in this time of pandemic, even in this time of a public health crisis, we know that the government might move from one code to another. We might move from red to yellow to green. We might be able to transition and do things that we had not been able to do months ago. But we know that there are still concerns on our hearts because the virus has not gone completely away. And we know that your word shows your son as having concern for the least of these. So we must think about every demographic. We must think about every person, every individual who's watching this live stream and who may come into this sanctuary. We're grateful for a pastor who has led us in such a way that, that him and the leadership team and the safety committee and so many other individuals have dedicated hours and hours and days of their time to make sure that this place is, has been set up to provide ultimate safety for its parishioners. 
We know that we've done this work. We know that we have toiled. We know we have looked to the congregation to see what, what do you say? Where is your heart? Where is your mind as it pertains to how we fulfill the mission of this church? But ultimately, Lord, we need to hear from you. So speak to our pastors, speak to our hearts, and let us know when the time is right. For we want to continue to push forward what you have for us to do, to push forward the message of the gospel, to do the work of ministry, to do the work of pastoral care, to do the work of sowing in, into people's lives the things that they can only get from you. We believe that this is an essential work, and we want to make sure that we do it to the best of our ability and to the glory of God. You have called Bethlehem to this community for this time and for this purpose. And we look to you to see when you will have us to move in the ways that best fulfill and accomplish that purpose. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, Agape. Bless the Lord this morning. Bye. 
and worship him. Sometimes all you have is an O.
Worship is what we do. Worship is who we are. Let my life praise you. Let my life praise you. Thank you, God, this morning for this time of worship. Thank you, God, this morning. We've gathered in your name to lift your name up on high. Use me, God, for your glory this morning that your people might be blessed, challenged, inspired, and yes, even convicted. May we worship you through the word, by the power of your word. And the people of God say together, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I would ask this morning, in the spirit of worship, that you turn in your Bible, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. So Christ has truly set us free. Now, make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. This morning, I want to preach the third in the series entitled, Who is Behind Your Mass? Who is behind your mass? This is an opportunity for us to examine ourselves, take inventory of who we are and whose we are. Take a deep look within to see whether or not we're walking with God or whether or not we're still bound by the flesh. Who is behind your mass? This is so important because from every appearance, it looks like we'll be wearing this mask for a long time. There does not seem to be any end in sight to wearing a mask. So consequently, we have to know who we are when we put this mask on. Let me be honest for a few moments. It was my desire on Father's Day to be able to go to the William Penn Inn and have dinner with my family. I love to have the opportunity on Father's Day to have them come and make a fuss over me. Most of you know how much I appreciate the William Penn Inn. And today I'm not able to go to the William Penn Inn. But that's another reason why it's important for us to appreciate what we have experienced in the past. This coronavirus has changed much of what we do and how we did it. To make things important, sometimes we major in minors. Lord have mercy. And minor in majors. Sometimes we don't appreciate the blessings that God has given to us. We take it for granted. Sometimes we even enlarge the past and make small of the present. Things have changed quite a bit in our lives. My grandmother said, you never miss the well until the water goes dry. Some of us really want to get back to church. When we had a chance, we did not want to come. 
But now we long for the opportunity to be in the house of God. Some of us took for granted the blessings God had given to us and took it lightly. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not making the William Penn Inn major. But what I'm saying, hopefully you get, is the fact that some of the things we did in the past, we took for granted. Things have changed completely. Some of us took our employment for granted. But there are countless people who are unemployed right now. Some of us have even taken our health for granted. But that has changed considerably. Some of us have even taken our loved ones for granted. Now we can't see them in the hospital. And when we had a chance to see them, we didn't go see them. When we had a chance to say, I love you, we didn't take the opportunity. Now we wish we could. If there was somebody here, they would say amen. So I hope you're saying amen at home. Some of us, if we're honest, have spent a lot of time in guilt, in shame, in pain. Get over it. Some of us are harboring things we did in the past. And the mask we put on hides us behind some of the stuff we did. There are even those who say that God is punishing us. And I've said before that if God was punishing us, we'd all stay punished all the time. Because all of us have messed up. That's what I said, all of us, me, you, everybody else have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have done some things that have not been honorable unto God. And some of us cannot forgive ourselves. You walk around with no self-esteem, walk around like we're victims, walk around like we're beaten. Other people tell us we're nothing and some of us believe we're nothing. What's behind your mask? Is it self-esteem? Do you know who you are? Are you a child of God? And when we lack self-esteem, we become angry, resentful, mean-spirited. Sometimes we take out on others, and they had nothing to do with our stuff, but we blame somebody else for some of the things that have happened to us. And some of us are tied to the law. We've forgotten all about grace. The law says this. Some of us are so narrow in our thinking. That's why it's important that we sensitize people even when they come back to church. So that if somebody doesn't have a mask on, you don't go and cuss them out. Oh, it's quiet in here this morning. I'm preaching this morning. I've seen people in the market who become angry because somebody else doesn't have a mask on. So one lady spit on somebody because somebody asked her, where's her mask? Some of us cannot enjoy freedom because our mask holds us back. We blame others. We blame ourselves. Whom God sets free is free, free to live, free to be who God's called you to be, free to experience life as a blessing from God every day. Look at the text. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Paul the humble servant of the Lord calls himself an apostle who is clear about who he is and where he is. Paul was set free and his freedom changed his life. 
It changed his life forever. He knew that sin that he committed had been forgiven and he was released from guilt, shame, and pain. He was able to do the Lord's work fully and freely. You don't have to use your mask as a shield so that one does not know who you really are. The mask is not for you to put on to hide yourself. The long ranger did that. His mask covered him and no one really knew who he was. Some of us are hiding behind our mask. People don't know who we are. We act one way one day and another day the same day, just a different hour. Some of us try to hide our stuff behind a mask. We're angry, we're bitter, we're mean, we're jealous, we're envious, and we have no real life at all. We just go through the motion. What's behind your mask? Do you know who you are? Do you know you've been set free by the hand of God? This coronavirus has changed so many things around us. Social distancing. We can't get close to one another. We're apart, and our mask does not help that matter anymore. I saw someone the other day spoke to me I didn't recognize them. They had a mask on. I wasn't trying to be bourgeois. I just did not recognize them. I don't know if they got offended enough. Hi, I, I don't know who you are. So many things have changed, but one thing that should not have changed is your love for God and your love for people. Some of us are so rigid, no room for grace at all. The word says this, and that's it. Leave room for grace and mercy. He set us free from the law. Paul was rigid. He was on his way to persecute the church. He thought it was right. But God changed him on the way to Damascus, and the Lord set him free. When God sets you free, be free enough to know that God has released you from all your stuff, all your pain. Your dress doesn't determine you. Your clothes don't determine you. People can tell who you are just by how you look from the outside. Walk with your head down like you're beaten like you don't have a friend in the world. Be confident. Walk with a sense of pride. I don't mean bragging, I don't mean boasting, but walk with a sense of strength, sense of confidence. Walk like you're victorious. Know that God has blessed you, released you from some of your past stuff. Walk like you know you've been set free by the hand of God. Don't try to hide your past. I was on the early morning prayer service today. One of the men who I've come to love and respect talked about his stuff. Talked about being incarcerated. My God, don't you realize, my brothers and sisters, that if God can save him, he can bless somebody else. Folk walking around, I don't know nothing about sin. I've always been saved, always full of the Holy Ghost, always done what's right. Get over that mess. God has given us a new past, a new beginning. Take advantage of it. This coronavirus has brought us a new season. Let us walk in the new season with a sense of confidence. Paul wanted to set the record straight. 
he writes to his fellow laborers and Lord, he wanted to let them know that he was not without fault. He did not want to give them false impression that he was without sin. Oh my God. I wish I could say I didn't know anything about sin, but I got some sin stuff that's fresh. I'm the only one got fresh sins. All you got sins in the past. All of us have some fresh stinking stuff. So Paul was clear. He did not want anybody to think he was God himself. You can't help anybody by trying to be so holy and self-righteous. Be transparent about your life. Be open about your life. If the Lord saved you, tell somebody else. The Lord's healed you, tell somebody else. The Lord has given you a new life, tell somebody else. The Lord has blessed your life, turn your life around. Tell somebody else that God might get the glory and somebody else might be strengthened by the hand of God. And you can't tell anybody if you're still caught in the past stuff. Paul acknowledged his radical change. Some of us have been changed radically. Think about this Father's Day. It took me a long time to forgive my father. I don't take any credit in that. You hear me talk about what he didn't do, but I must admit I should have forgiven him a long time ago. But I carried that too long. I blamed him without giving God praise and thanks for what he's done for me. Some of us are blaming others. Get over it. Give God thanks for what he's done in spite of what others have done. Paul was the same person who was disliked by some of those that he was serving with. They spoke about his inability to speak clearly. Even though he was well-educated, he did not let that go to his head. When you make a promise to God, live up to that promise. God will forgive you and release you from the bond of sin. There's some things that are worse than physical illness. Sin is an illness. There may be some cure for some other illness that's affecting your body, but he's the only one that can cure you from your sins. And some of us need to be cured from our sins. There's one doctor who can help you. That's Dr. Jesus. He's the only one that can forgive you of your sins. And I thank God for Paul. All of his writings, Paul did not allow his past to cause him slavery to the law. Paul says, don't get tied up again of slavery to the law. We got folk in the church who's so bound by the law. The law says this. Can't eat meat on Sunday. Can't go to sports events on Sunday. Well, you know, some of those laws, some of them you broke them, but they were still there. I've seen people get angry at someone who thinks different than they think. Leave room for honest discussion. Don't judge people based upon a certain stance they may take. Be open to understand there's some stances that all of us take that may not be correctly right. I had a wonderful discussion with Reverend Tripline on Friday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday, Thursday, I got the days mixed up. It was Thursday. I don't have the discussion mixed up. I got the days mixed up. And we're talking about change. And his perspective and mine were totally different. However, we left the fireside chat on the same accord. You'll get that by 11 o'clock. Be able to agree and disagree with someone without breaking the bond of relationship. 
Learn from each other. Glean from each other. Don't be so rigid in your thinking. One of the things I want God to do for me is create more opportunities for growth because I'm not where I need to be. I need God to open up some new opportunities for me to learn and to speak and to reason differently. I've not arrived yet. There's some things I'm still struggling with. And I pray that God will open up my mind so I can glean from him and know what God's calling me to do in 2020. Even in terms of dress, there are those who have already determined how one should dress when they come to church. How one should dress when they come to church. As if to say dress was the only thing that was important. So many things we're tied up into. What's behind your mask? Is it kindness? Is it love? Is consideration for others? Have you been set free from the law? Have, has Christ come in your life? This is mandatory. When you go into a facility, you have to have a mask. You might not be able to get in if you don't have it. So the question is, when you put it on, how are you going in? Do you have an attitude? I don't have a mask on and I don't, I left it home. I don't need to wear a mask. Don't let the mask rob you from who God has called you to be. Paul knew the power of the Holy Spirit. So he closed out this chapter. He says, but the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. Let me say that again. Before you put on your mask, let the Holy Spirit lead you. I would argue strongly, before you go out the house and put your mask on, pray first. Before you put your mask on, pray first that God will give you discernment, that God will quiet your spirit. Pray first before you put your mask on. So when somebody else approaches you, you can respond with kindness and meekness and gentleness. When somebody speaks angry words to you, you can respond, I prayed before I put it on. So Lord, tender my words. Guide my steps so I will not be out of your will. Oh, I'm getting happy now because before you put your mask on, pray about it first. Because somebody may say something to you and you need to be prayed up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Put your mask down and pray over it first. And my brothers and sisters, some of our masks are soiled. You need to wash it out. You're putting on a dirty mask. Yes, a mask that you had on yesterday that you blessed somebody out with and you're putting it back on today. Purify that mask. Wash that mask. Pray over that mask. So when somebody asks you, what's behind your mask? M is mine. A is anointed. S, it's been saved. And kind, the K is kindness. My mask represents the fact it's mine, it's anointed, I'm saved, and I'm producing kindness. So when you see with my mask, 
You're not seeing anger come out of me. You're not seeing guilt come out of me. You're not seeing strife come out of me. You're seeing the love of God come out of me no matter what you think about me. I'm praying with kindness and gentleness that I can help somebody. I can be a blessing to somebody. I can encourage somebody. I can share with somebody. I can give God praise even with a mask because my mask reminds me I've been set free by the hand of God. I'm not like I used to be. A change has come over me. A wonderful change. A marvelous change, a mighty change has come over me. I've been set free by the hand of God. I know who I am and whose I am. My mask doesn't hold back the fact I've been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus cleansed me from all unrighteousness. I'm free. Thank God Almighty. I'm free. No longer chains holding me. I could put my mask on and walk with confidence. I could put my mask on because I prayed about it first. I could put my mask on and talk to folk who may not talk back to me. I could put my mask on and help folk who I don't know. I could put my mask on and be transparent and tell them I made a mess of my life but God turned my life around. I can tell somebody that God is good, worthy to be praised. I can tell somebody he'll pick you up, turn you around, and put your feet on solid ground. I can tell somebody only what you do for Christ will last. I can tell somebody that what we're going through is your past. The time will come when I have to wear a mask, but while I'm wearing a mask, I'm going to wear it with dignity and honor giving God glory. I'm not going to do anything with my mask that will give God some disgrace. I'm going to walk with holy boldness. I'm going to live a life pleasing unto God. I'm going to walk wherever I go in the marketplace, in the bank, in the church, no matter where I go, my mask is an indication that God has blessed me, keeping me. Anybody here today want to put your mask on and give God praise? Anybody want to pray over your mask? Anybody want to thank God? He brought you this far. Anybody want to acknowledge the goodness of God? You don't look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. 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 And there was a time in my life when I didn't wear a mask. But I was ashamed of who I was. I lacked self-esteem. I lacked the knowledge of who God was in my life. And I walked around too long with my head down, feeling as though I was nothing. And other folks told me I was nothing. But I found out a long time ago that God is my father. And God had the riches in his hand. Give God praise this morning, wherever you are. Give God thanks this morning. Give God praise. Wherever you are, thank God today. Thank God today. Give God praise. Wherever you are, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Who's behind your mask? Reverend Triple, I want you to come and open up the door to the church. You don't have a mask on. You got it right there. Who's behind your mask, my brother? Is God behind your mask? Can you give him praise this morning? Each and every day, our prayer is that God will help us to represent him in everything we say and do. That behind our mask, behind what people see, that we're constantly growing in the faith and growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and exuding the sort of spirit and character to other people that demonstrate that we know God. So just yesterday, I saw someone post online. It was a question. We're all in this place of quarantine. We're all in this place of distancing. What have you done in this pandemic that the pandemic allowed you to do? That was the question that the brother posted. And some people said that I was able to lose some weight. Somebody else said I was able to start cooking more. Someone else said that I was able to stop spending money. But my question for you today is, what did you do in this quarantine that the quarantine allowed you to do? Know that despite of the fact that we are socially or physically distanced, we are still spiritually connected. 
Maybe I could fill in the blank for you and suggest that in this time of quarantine, one thing you could do is give your heart and your life to the Lord. That even in the time of a quarantine, you can respond to the word of God and be able to say that a decision I made in this time was to start following Jesus, to look beyond my mask and look for what's deep within me and allow God to reach that place. Or maybe you can make the decision even in the time of quarantine that the decision I made in the 2020 pandemic was to join the Bethlehem Baptist Church. I will say to you, even though I am a biased person, that this is a wonderful place of God. We are not a perfect church, but we do serve a perfect God. And we will be blessed to have you to walk with us, to, to do life with us, to, for us to support you and not just look for something from you, but to look how can we be of service to you. It's a great place to be connected to the people of God. You can call us this week. You can call us today at 215-643-4977. You can go to BBC, the number four, Christ.org, and, and become a member that way to let us know that you want to respond to the gospel. You can even text us at, 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 at 66599 to simply say for the number four Christ and we will be connected to you. We're thankful for what God is doing in your life because we truly believe that despite of the quarantine, there's something that the quarantine will allow you to do, which is to respond to the call of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are praying for you and we're looking to speak with you as well. God bless. It is my prayer that you will heed the invitation that Reverend Tripline just extended. And it may not be Bethlehem, but I pray that you will find a place of worship. We would love to have you here at Bethlehem. That may not be possible for various reasons. But find a place where you can honor God and give him your life. Once again, we are grateful for godly fathers they are blessing to our children and again we want to acknowledge the fact that every father's day we recognize the oldest father and the youngest father and and so if you've joined us late if you feel as though you're the oldest father please call brenda benson our chief of staff leave your name and age the oldest father, the youngest father, and we have a gift for you. I'm so grateful to God that here at Bethlehem, like many of our houses of worship, we have some wonderful men of God who serve God, serve their families, and love their spouses, their children, their grandchildren. And for those men who may not have biological children, those men who work with our youth, choir and ushers and sports activities, work with our deacons and deaconess and trustees, just grateful to God for every blessing. And as I said earlier, I'm grateful to God that in spite of whatever my father didn't do, there was a man named Pastor Albert Franklin Campbell. There was a man named John F. White Sr. who's gone home to glory. There's so other men in Iron sharp as arms, that's what I said this morning. So I'm grateful for men like Pastor Wilder, who loves his family and is ecstatic over his new grandchild. And you cannot be around him without him talking about his grandchild. Other men who are just proud of their families. I'm grateful that Pastor Wilder's included us with every opportunity he has received to share the blessing with us here at Bethlehem. So we're going to take advantage of the gift of milk to be given to not only those who come to our pantry, but Maddie Dixon and others in the faith will do that on Thursday morning. Join us during our midweek Bible study, 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Pray for the sick and shut in. Honor God by acknowledging God's goodness. So I pray today you'll have a blessed Father's Day. Reach out and 
called some man in your life, may not be your father, but some man has blessed you, some man of God that you just want to acknowledge today. Take a moment and give God praise for all of the men, sons who look up to us, grandsons who look up to us, granddaughters, granddaughters who look up to us. So I thank God today as I prepare to take my seat for my wife, for my sons and daughters and my grandchildren. And even though I'm not able to go to the way you pen in, I pray that they'll find a way to encourage me and to make a fuss over me. I know I'm not alone. Every man of God needs someone to say, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank God for you. So I thank God for our sons in the ministry here at Bethlehem all of those sons and daughters we have in the ministry here at Bethlehem. And so with heads bowed and hearts lifted unto God, gracious God, we thank you for this day. Help us, O oh God, when we leave here, when we put our masks on, to pray about it first, to wear our masks, not bound by the law, but bound by your grace. Help us, O oh God, not to dwell on the past, walk into the present and to the future knowing that this coronavirus will pass bless oh God those who worship with us today in their homes and their places oh God by which they reside and oh God may we be blessed by your presence and power until we meet again and your people say together amen amen and amen have a wonderful day make it a good day to God be the glory